Hi everyone, I'm Brad Free with David Aragona, and this is the preview segment of Derby Watch and two major races this weekend, this Saturday, in Florida and Arkansas. The Florida Derby and the Arkansas Derby, both races feature 100 points to the winner. And let's start with the most significant race of the week. It's at Gulfstream Park, and it includes the current Derby Watch favorite, Forte. David, he didn't draw well, but he's still still supposed to win this race. Yeah, many were surprised to see 12 runners pass through the entry box in this Florida Derby, giving the imposing presence of Forte, who has been pointing to this race for a long time. You could see a lot of big prices on the first page of the pass for, of the uh, field here. A lot of horses that arguably don't belong in this race, and a lot of the major contenders were drawn in those outside post positions. But despite the fact that a couple of the main rivals for Forte are drawn in post number 10 and 11, those being Fort Bragg and WNL, it sounds like the connections of all of these horses, Tim Yachty and Todd Pletcher and Danny Gargan, they're going to go ahead and run despite drawing those outside post positions. And uh, even with that poor post position, Forte is still very much the horse to beat in this Florida Derby. Well, he's the best horse in the field. He's arguably the best three-year-old in the country right now. I was a little surprised that the connections of Fort Bragg elected to skip the Sunland Derby and instead ship down to Florida uh, for the Florida Derby. And I say that because I think the Fort Bragg would have been very tough to beat in the Sunland Derby. He could have earned 50 points had he won the race. His comeback in the San Felipe was a lot better than looked. He was wide every step of the way. He needed to start. Now he's going down to Florida and he's up against the two-year-old champion whose comeback race was dazzling. So um, I don't know. What do you think about Fort Bragg, David? And let's go ahead and take a look at Forte's comeback in the Fountain of Youth before we add to our discussion. This is a Pretty good Colt making his comeback. Yeah, I mean, as for Forte, who we're seeing in this replay, this was the prep race that I think a lot of people were hoping to see. He didn't have to work too hard to beat this field. Obviously, wasn't facing as strong a, a, a group of rivals as he'll have to face on the first Saturday in May, but he certainly did things the right way, earned a nice speed figure. So I think he's earned his position as being the clear-cut favorite in this Florida Derby. And as for Ford Bragg, who some might consider to be the main rival for Forte, we're going to get an early read on how strong that San Felipe might have been because that's a race that got a pretty high speed figure for a winner practical move a lot of those horses are awaiting the santa anita derby so we'll get to see how they run a week ahead of time or at least how Fort bragg runs a week ahead of time on saturday and he does have to overcome that post position but you could make the argument that second off the layoff he's a horse that might have some upside i still have some questions about how far he wants to go even though he is a son of Tappet, just based on what i've seen in his races sometimes he's not the strongest finisher uh but he's definitely one of the main rivals for the favorite on saturday yeah, that's a good point coming out of the San Felipe. The one, two, three finishers from the San Felipe are expected to run next Saturday in the San Anita Derby, those being Practical Move, Go Rocket Ride, and Skinner. So it's all about Forte. He's the only Derby Watch lister who's running in the Florida Derby. I think, David, that he'll probably be the only one coming out if this race goes according to expectations. All right, let's talk about a horse uh, race that's a little bit more wide open. It's the Arkansas Derby, and it is race number 12 at Oakland Park on Saturday. A very deep competitive field. There are four Derby Watch listers in the field. Angel of Empire, Rocket Can, Reincarnate, and Red Route 1. David, this is a good race, isn't it? It is a good race. It's a fun race to handicap. A lot of storylines coming in. Some horses that need the points, some horses that don't need the points. Uh, the one that seems like he's safely in the Kentucky Derby is Angel of Empire, so uh, there's the least pressure on him to achieve a result in this race, but he does want to prove that his risen star was no fluke, because we didn't see the best performances come back in the Louisiana Derby out of the risen star, so we'll see how Angel of Empire does, but Brad, I know that you, both you and I like the horse that is the more line favorite for the Arkansas Derby reincarnate a horse that had a pretty tough trip last time in the rebel. Yeah, he did. He actually did not have a good trip in either of his last two starts. His breakout performance was two starts back in the sham when he went 45 and change 109 and change dug in and won the race anyway. And then I don't know what happened at the break last time out, but reincarnate did not show the type of speed that we expected him to show. He got into all sorts of traffic trouble in the stretch and he still tried to finish. I think that was a terrific schooling exercise, educational run for Reincarnate. But David, you mentioned he's kind of uh, up against it. He needs to run well. 
and earn some points to get into the Kentucky Derby, right? Yeah, he probably needs a 1-2 finish to really guarantee that spot in the Derby, just given how high we've seen the points threshold continue to go, especially with these limited spots that are left, seeing how that points list is working out. So we're looking for an exact to finish from Reincarnate. And as long as he breaks cleanly this time, it should be doable. And we did see him show that new dimension last time coming from off the pace, but I would imagine we'll see him revert to a more forwardly placed style in this race. That's probably not going to be the case for Red Route 1, a horse that just has absolutely zero early speed and i'll be interested to see how far he drops back in the early stages because that's been a real problem for this horse in some of his recent starts yeah he, he's like a gato del sol type of horse who runs from dead last uh the daily racing form past performances have red route one adding blinkers for the saturday race so i thought that was uh, an interesting change in equipment for a horse who has no speed and rallies from behind and is actually running well using that style. So we'll find out a little bit more about um, Red Route 1 coming from off the pace. I think one of the pace factors in this race is a horse that I kind of have a soft spot for because he seems like he's kind of come out of nowhere. And I'm referring to number four, Two Eagles River. He is a speed horse who destroyed Disarm last time out in an allowance race. And Disarm kind of validated that effort with a decent runner-up finish last weekend in the Louisiana Derby. Does Two Eagles River have a chance to steal the Arkansas Derby on Saturday? I mean, there's not a ton of speed signed on in this race. I still have some questions about the legitimacy of that allowance performance last time. He got to set a pretty moderate pace that day, and I think he caught disarm before he was really ready to put forth a top effort. So there were definitely some things working in Two Eagles River's favor that day. Uh, but he's moving in the right direction for a very dangerous barn in Chris Hartman. So I don't think he's a horse that you can just dismiss. No, I'm not going to dismiss. I'm going to bet on him. If he's 10 to 1, which is his price on the morning line, I'm going to take a shot on Two Eagles River, recognizing that I think you're right, David. Reincarnate is the horse to beat. He's a good horse. Gained seasoning last time out with a better break and a better trip. I think he'll be right in the hunt. So a good, interesting race for Derby Watch listers, those being Angel of Empire, Rocket Can, Reincarnate, and Red Route one okay time for the on the bubble segment and let's start off by talking about a horse who i felt bad taking him off the derby watch list because he's running this weekend but we needed to make some space and mage comes off the list maybe he jumps back on it if he runs well in the florida derby he did run better than his finished position in the fountain of youth um wild on ice you know we talked about him earlier winner of the sunland derby with a 77 buyer speed figure if he does have 50 points he can probably make the derby field if they choose um david jason's road what about him he's got 45 points i don't think either one of us really like this horse as far as the kentucky derby goes um but he does have 45 points any chance at all that jason's road maybe we are underestimating him or are you sticking to your guns yeah, I mean, both Wild on Ice and Jace's Rose could be in the Derby if their connections want to go. We'll see what that points threshold ultimately turns out to be, but 45 probably will be enough. Uh, I, I just didn't like his effort that much in the Louisiana Derby, and I think he'll have to deal with a much sterner pace scenario in the Kentucky Derby, and he didn't handle it too well last Saturday. So uh, I definitely have some doubts about him. We should note three of these four on the bubble horses are all horses that like to show speed, so they would definitely have an impact on the Kentucky Derby pace scenario if they ended up getting into that race, uh, but they have to do a little bit more to prove that they're true contenders. Uh, we're on the same page with regards to Instant Road, or Jace's Road, I should say. As far as Instant Coffee, it's a horse I kind of feel sorry for because I think he had a legitimate alibi in the Louisiana Derby. The pace was wrong for his style. He lost a lot of ground. He only has 32 points. That's not going to be enough to make the Derby field, probably. And his connections are talking about either the Preakness on May 20th or the Peter Pan on May 13th in New York. And I, I, I want to just reiterate a quote that I read from the owner of Instant Coffee, Al Gold. And it's, he's told Blood Horse this. And I just want to repeat this quote because I, I, I loved it. And what Al Gold said was this. There are a lot of good quality races out there for our horses, end quote. And what he was basically saying is 
the Kentucky Derby does not have to be the end all. It's a great race. It's we devote a lot of attention to it. But if instant coffee does not make the Kentucky Derby, there will be plenty of opportunities up ahead for him to establish himself as a top class three-year-old. We know he's good. He's a two-time graded stakes winner. So Mage, Wild and Ice, Jason's Road, and Instant Coffee on the bubble. As for this week, Forte returns Saturday in Florida. Reincarnate runs Saturday in Arkansas. This weekend and next, we are in the heart of Kentucky Derby prep season. For David Aragona, I'm Brad Free, and we'll see you next week.